The plan for today is to stretch the wire, woven wire. Hopefully we can get there. Something that I've been kind of dreading is moving this entire roll. And this probably weighs about 200, 250 pounds. All the research I've been doing on this woven wire fence, everybody uses a tractor to roll it out. I don't have that. I would use a metal pipe to stick in there. Maybe that can help me move it around, but I don't have a metal pipe. I may not have a tractor, but I have a mini truck. Guys, we finally, finally after months, we're getting some rain. We're still pretty low here. We're barely right, right there. It's been 80 degrees for the last maybe couple weeks. It's more like the rain is kind of spitting at us, but it's something. And now we're finally making our way down the property with these turkeys because it's butcher gonna be butcher day and it's almost turkey day and we are about out of feed so don't want to keep feeding them I hear trickles I hear it guys it's filling up slowly but surely. We'll get there. Oh, oh. Precious water. Don't waste it. One of these days we'll get a good pour and that thing will fill up really nice. Bernice. Good morning, Bernice. Freddy. Time to move the egg layers. We are moving forward with building this fence. Day one of building this portion of our fence, I put in my first H brace, which I am super excited about. Day two, I put in my second H brace. And then after I posted that video, I started to get, well, maybe a few hundred comments telling me how I did it wrong. So I contacted my fence mentor, my friend Mike, who is very knowledgeable on fences, I sent him a picture of this and I was like, hey Mike, is this right? And he said, no, it's wrong. The H part is correct, but this diagonal brace I have going on here is not. It's supposed to be the other way around. Instead of starting high on this end, it needs to be high on this end. I know, it, it's kind of confusing if you're not used to doing this. That's why we're starting little, taking little bites, so that way I can get used to it and see how it goes. If I make a mistake, no big deal. And now we're gonna switch out this H brace and make it correct position before we start doing this woven wire fence. Okay. There's no way I'm gonna take out this pin. No way I'm gonna take out this post and redo it. There's no pin on this side. I've been using these brace pins this is a package of five for $10, so $2 per pin. My fence mentor says get one of these, which is like basically a giant nail. These are like 40 cents a piece instead of $2 a piece.
Yeah, did I hold it straight? I mean, it's in there now. And then you put the squeeze. Coming down the line, we're gonna continue the fence line. I mean, this is pretty much the property line, uh, but there's no fence here. Dogs just come in freely. We have to. The rain's clearing a path. All right, so the only thing I think you need to come in with a chainsaw and get this sycamore tree. I think it's a sycamore tree. And this Chinese privet. If you guys have been following us for the last two years, almost two years, at this new property, all right here, huge trees all growing into this barn. I mean, I have videos on everything, so you can look back on, on old videos. They were practically falling over. We had to hire a company to knock them down, to push them over. So this was, an, was not even accessible in here. Look at that. My first corner. I don't really need this one to run that fencing, but eventually I'm gonna need it to run it up this way. Yeah, man, we're getting it, we're getting it. Well, that wasn't too bad. stretch it from this end and we need to unroll it all the way down somehow I'm basically just rolling this out like fabric, the length that I want it. We're gonna stop here at this corner. So I'm gonna go a little bit more excess. It might be too much. I'd rather have too much than too little. It's just gonna be a lot easier for me to maneuver if I cut this than still having it on this giant roll. Definitely feels like an obstacle course because this pole right here, that's in my way. I need to go on this side of it and put that wire there. When you start taking out stuff that you already put in, that's what, that, that's what makes it the whole project longer.
No, I'm not gonna stretch it by hand. Man, it's taking a lot to get to this point. <laughs> We're about to stretch some fence now. Finally. I'm gonna add two pull chains. It's like a, it's like a come along, but it's not a come along. Well, yeah, I guess it's kind of like a come along, but it's specific to stretching fence. The wild world of fencing. It's a whole new world. We're learning together. These are kind of like teeth. The chain goes in between there. And then as you ratchet it, it kind of walks along the chain and tightens it. Ratchet the top and the bottom, try to make it even. And then you gotta make sure it's not caught on anything. Any kind of branches. So we have way too much excess. Just a short piece. Well, I spoke too soon. I cut it too short. Yeah, I'm, I'm almost, I'm, I'm like an inch too short where I can tack it onto here or wind it up. I can't even touch it. I'm gonna have to put in a staple and then wrap it around the staple. The moment of truth, That's that ends tight. It feels tight. Now we gotta take these off. Start in the bottom. Okay, so this is where I think I finally need another person to pull this away so that we can take this out. And after I took out the stretcher bar, it still felt really tight. And then I stapled in the fence to the wooden posts. I also attached it to the T posts. I'm pretty sure there's a better way to put these clips in or to use different clips, but these clips came free with a T post. Did you know that? Probably a faster way of doing this. There's probably a tool for that. I wish there was an app for that. Mm. Altogether, I would say about three days it took me. Anyone that tackles a fencing project, I have mad respect for you. First of all, it's a ton of work to do fencing. A few things I learned these last few days of putting up this fence is it takes time. Also, having a good set of pliers, hand tools, like I'm talking like pay the extra dollars and buy good quality hand tools, pliers. The best way to learn, like many other things, when you trying to build a farm, is you have to do it with your own hands. You can watch so many videos. I mean, I've watched a ton already on how to build woven wire fence, put in posts, but it just nothing like getting the materials and start doing it. You're gonna make mistakes. It's very different than watching a video. Three days of putting in one, two, 
three posts, so digging three holes, making three H braces, and pounding six T posts. It seems like I did a thousand feet, but it was only a hundred. So thank you guys for being here. This was a huge accomplishment for me. Man, I'm glad I kind of got this out of the way and I, now I have a better understanding of how to build this type of fence. So if you're new to that whole world, I suggest start small. Start a little section just to kind of get your feet wet and see how things work. Make sure you got the right tools. Because even though this is only 100 feet, we have, I don't know, maybe a couple thousand left of more fencing to do. So I hope you guys like fencing content because that's what you're gonna get. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you guys on the next one.